ECG trace. Okay, <clears throat> so ECG trace, what we'll do, we'll, we'll just go a bit over the theory with the electrical activity of the heart and then we'll look at the ECG trace. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's just draw a quick heart. Okay. Right, so we've got our atria and we've got our ventricles. Okay. And the thing that the structure that is going to begin the events of the cardiac cycle is the SAN, the sinoatrial node, and it's um, on this right atrium over here. Okay, then remember we have this other structure that's responsible for transferring that impulse to the ventricles, the AVN, approximately here. Okay, and then, so what happens? The first event that's going to happen is the sinoatrial node is going to um, send out a, wa uh, uh, a wave of depolarization across both atria okay but because of the non-conductive tissue between the atria and the ventricles that wave of depolarization does not pass to the ventricles directly but it passes to the AVN now the AVN then kind of conducts this impulse via the Perkin fibers or the bundle of his without allowing the impulse to spread to the ventricles at this point until we get to the apex and from the apex is where the impulse spreads to the ventricles. Now this theory is important because it affects the ECG trace. So if we look at, if we then could measure this electrical activity, what we would see is a, a bit of electrical activity at the beginning that would show the SAN sending out its uh, wave of depolarization initially. And then we'd see this kind of bigger peak, so a, a much larger electrical activity associated with the contraction of the ventricles. Because remember, more force is generated here. So there's going to be more electrical activity here because so many more cells are kind of undergoing that uh, contraction. Okay, and then there's a there's this little bit of activity that after that which is associated with diastole. Okay, so this, this right here, that is called the P wave and it's to do with the atrial contraction. Okay, so P is to do with atrial Contraction is the electrical activity that's associated with the atria contracting. Then the much bigger electrical activity is, is a, a little bit later in time. Again, on the x-axis, we've got time. So a little bit later, a little bit after the atria contract, ventricles are filled up with blood, and then they've undergone their own contraction. Obviously, stimu stimulated again by electrical activity, and this is the electrical activity so this is known as the QRS complex. QRS complex. So it's the QRS complex. QRS complex, that's to do with, that indicates ventricular contraction. So you can, you can say that's ventricular systole. That was atrial systole. Okay, right, and so that's T. Yeah. Okay, so this is T, and this is to do with diastole. So, in relation to the kind of questions you could get in um, that concern the ECG trace, um, I think there's basically two types. Um, first one is essentially working out the heart rate 
based on the ECG trace and we've kind of uh, discussed that in, a, in another video but I'll go over the basics so um, let's just say you have this ECG trace right here okay essentially what you do is you'd identify um, the same point in two different cardiac cycles and the time it takes so you'd read off the graph here um, this distance okay the time it takes to repeat the same point in the cardiac cycle is the time it takes for one beat essentially okay and then so what you do is you uh, get that into seconds and then you divide 60 seconds which is the time for one minute divide 60 seconds by the time in seconds it took um, to go through one cardiac cycle okay and essentially that should be the number of beats you would get per minute okay so as I uh, described in a previous video th this you might get pressure changes to do with the heart you might even get electrical changes to do with the cardiac cycle as in this case and so you'd you'd approach calculating the heart rate like that okay now the other kind of question which is the, essentially the focus of this video um, the other kind of question that you could get is in is relating to these different um, conditions that are uh, affecting different parts of the heart in different ways and they're thereby affecting um, the ECG trace in different ways okay so the second type of question is is all to do with the kind of uh, heart heart defects that you can get and how they affect and how they affect the cardiac cycle okay and you can then uh, by looking at the ECG trace you can therefore diagnose these conditions okay so let's look at each of these so for each of these conditions what we'll be doing is comparing to the normal sinus rhythm so we'll always be comparing back to this normal uh, ECG trace and for each one essentially we have to do two things okay a we have to ident be able to identify the differences so we can visually identify what's difference What's the difference between um, uh, uh, the ECG trace that's caused by a, a particular heart condition? So A, identifying, being able to identify what those differences are, and B, being able to explain what they are. In very basic terms, um, and you can't always do that. <clears throat> okay, so let's begin, right? So let's begin with arrhythmia. Okay, so we can see here that if we compare uh, arrhythmia, which is this one right here, if we compare arrhythmia to the normal sinus rhythm, we see that there's one main difference, which is that the distances between the same point in different cardiac cycles is not the same which is not the case in the normal sinus rhythm where there's exactly the same time between each cardiac or the cardiac cycle takes the same time each time so arrhythmia is kind of characterized by having a normal ECG trace individually so we still get the we still get the P wave we still get the QRS complex and we still get the uh, T wave so that that part of it's fine atria are contracting normally the ventricles are contracting normally and we are getting diastole however the the time it takes between each cardiac cycle the time each cardiac cycle takes is not the same okay so this is uh, m likely most uh, most likely to do with the functioning of the sinoatrial node Remember, its function is to, you know, um, periodically send out the wave of depolarization to begin each cardiac cycle. So, arrhythmia most likely caused by misfunctioning of the SAN. Now, we'll go on to bradycardia, 
We can see here that if we compare bradycardia to the normal sinus rhythm, in that case we can see that the gaps, or well, the time it takes for each cardiac cycle, is much longer than normal. And so, even though the cardiac cycle, you know, atrial contraction is fine, ventricular contraction is fine, and we are getting diastole, however, the the heart rate is much lower than normal. So remember, normal is 60 to 100 beats per minute. Bradycardia is characterized by a heart rate that is less than 60 beats per minute. Again, this is likely due to misfunctioning of the sinoatrial node. So in this case, the wave of depolarizations are not being sent out frequently enough. Next, tachycardia. Okay, so this one right here. We can see here that tachycardia is characterized by a heart rate which is much higher than normal. So the gaps between or well, the time it takes for each cardiac cycle is much smaller when compared to the normal sinus rhythm. So those, again though, we're getting normal atrial contraction, normal ventricular contraction, and normal diastole. However, the, um, it's the rate of the beat that is much higher than normal. Again, that should be attributed to the sinoatrial node function. Right, next, uh, we have atrial fib fibrillation. Okay, this one right here, and we can see that we can see that the QRS complex is there. However, two major differences. First, we can't really identify the uh, uh, P wave, so the atrial contraction uh, has got uh, is not occurring as normal. We can't identify diastole. Also, the distances between the QRS complexes are different and so we have some form of arrhythmia here as well so the, the spacings between the time between the cardiac cycles is not regular okay so next we have ventricular fibrillation and here there's a lot of things going on we can't identify the P wave can't identify the T wave, and the QRS complex is, though the ventricles are contracting, it does not look like a normal QRS complex if we compare to the other diagrams. Okay, um, and yeah, and, and the spacing between the QRS complex is much shorter than, uh, than in the other uh, conditions. So, Clearly, misfunctioning of the ventricles here also. Um, and there we have it. So, so, A, identify the main differences from the normal sinus rhythm. And B, being able to attribute that uh, those differences to a particular part of the heart that may not be functioning properly.